It's the second Sunday of Advent today, and uh, our theme for the day is hope. Hope is a very important thing, and as we come together today, we remember that Advent is a time of preparation and a time of anticipation. We are praying, praying for the coming of the Lord. That is our hope. And we anticipate this with great joy. The passage that I read from Luke this morning has to do with John the Baptist. And uh, John the Baptist is a very interesting person, to say the least. He's the one that came with a, a coat of camel hair and uh, had a diet of uh, locusts and wild honey. But he was chosen before he was ever born for a specific purpose. And that purpose was to go before the coming of the Lord and to help get people prepared for that coming. And as I read this morning, he starts out by realizing who he is and what he is here for. And he understands that he is fulfilling a prophecy that happened 400 years before. It's a prophecy that came out of the book of Isaiah. And I'll read the prophecy to you right now, and you see if you recognize it. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low, the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You probably recognize that because I just read it out of the Gospel of Luke. Because 400 years before those words were penned down in Luke's Gospel, Isaiah the prophet had told the people about the coming of the Lord when all flesh shall see his coming. For 400 years, those people through thick and thin and mostly thick relied on that promise that they had been given. The promise from Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet. John was a prophet too. And during his lifetime, that prophecy was going to come true. The hope of all the years are gathered together in what John the Baptist is talking about and has to bring. He had, he had, a, he had something that he had to do. He was chosen before he was ever born to do it. He was to go out and proclaim a baptism for repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. That's how people were going to get ready for the coming of the Lord. John had something to do. The people had something to do. And it all took place in the desert around the Jordan. 
Because that's where things happen. In the out of the way places. On the fringe of society. And when those people came to him to be baptized. As a prophet, he said to them. And this is hard to believe. He said to them, you brood of vipers. Who warned you to come? Who let you know that the new era was dawning? And they said to him. What can we do in response to the coming of the Lord? And he said to them, If you have two coats, give one to someone who needs one. If you have extra bread, give that to someone who needs it. If you are a tax collector, don't accept more than what you are supposed to accept. And if you are a soldier, be so with kindness. Those were the things that John said to the people as they got ready to prepare for the coming of the Lord. And that's what he says to us. We hear his words and we love those words. A voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And every year we hear them read. And every year they cause a flutter in our hearts. Because that's exactly what we want to do right now during the season of Advent. We want to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Now, of course, the Lord is already here. And he has been for over 2,000 years. But we want to redo every year that preparation so we can get that feeling once more inside of us. And even if we do have some age, those feelings are stirred up inside of us, the feelings of excitement. And that's exactly what those words of prophecy from Isaiah and as Luke writes them down, that's exactly what those words do for us. Now, we've been studying in Bible study group um, some lessons and they're called uh, uh, Almost Christmas. And it is a Wesleyan Advent experience. And it's been wonderful for me. Uh, we kind of stick to our own traditions, you know. We don't learn about everybody else. And uh, in my tradition, I learned about Martin Luther. And uh, I'm not that much of a church historian. So I didn't learn a lot about John Wesley. But I have been learning about John Wesley. And it's really been wonderful. John Wesley was one who knew about hope and knew how to fulfill it. We've been talking about hope. The people for 400 years hoped in the words of Isaiah the prophet and those words are getting to come true. And what we have learned in the Bible study lesson is this, that hope that is not complete is an almost hope. But an altogether hope is something different. An altogether hope means that we take the hope that we get right now and we put it into action and share it with others. That's an altogether hope. And this Advent season 
is all about hope. It's all about anticipation. And we, like those people who showed up for baptism with John, we then ask the question, well, in sight of everything that's happening, the wonder of it all, what can we do? What can we do in preparation for the coming of the Lord? And John's answer was very easy. To prepare for the coming of the Lord, we need to share that hope with others. Now John Wesley did this by going out to the margins of society where he felt the church wasn't going. He carried hope to the people who need hope. John Wesley has become a hero of mine. I can really feel this person because he really felt the gospel and he carried it with him wherever he went. And that's what we want to be like. We have the hope. My goodness, this is a joyous season as we anticipate the coming of our Lord. We're filled with hope once again. And we'd like for that hope to be an altogether hope. It's something that we have to give. We're kind of like John. We can carry that hope. We can be happy. We can shed some joy into this world. And we have the avenue to do it. The avenue is this. We are the people of God. We, like John, have a mission. Our mission is to shed hope. We need to shed hope in our community, in our country, and in the world. This is a wonderful time of preparation and anticipation. Today we're going to be revitalized in all of that because we are going to share together our Lord's Supper. And in that we will find the strength to move out into our community and be people when we hear negativity, when we hear hate, we are the people that can bring hope into the situation. We are the ones that carry this hope. And we want it to be an altogether hope. A hope that is filled, a hope that is satisfying, and that always means we include others. The only way to have an altogether hope is to bring others in to share that hope with us. And this is our time, and this is the place. We heard Isaiah's prophecy, the time has come, and here we are. We have been born anew to a lively hope.
through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. That's where we are. We have been born anew through that hope that has come to us through our Lord and Savior. For this, we are a grateful people. We give thanks. And we remember the words of St. Francis. You know his prayer well. But there's that one phrase. Is it, Lord, help us where there is despair to bring hope. <laughs>